let me first start off by saying that um, I'm not a senior developer. I don't think I classify myself as a mid-level developer either. I'm, a, I'm really passionate more than anything else. Uh, if anything, I might be junior. I do know that I can get the job done, which is the point. And I'm trying to say all of this because of the fact that uh, this isn't my day job, and I just do it out of the love of it. And frankly, by coming to, the, to these events, I end up learning. Um, I know, for example, uh, one of the first exposures for NGRX was when Jesse just bombarded me with that. And I was like, yeah, of course. And I didn't say anything because I didn't want to feel like the, the only person who didn't know anything. Um, but as I uh, grew to learn NGRX, whatnot, um, I saw how complex it was. You know, it, it became quite familiar. Nonetheless, it, there's still a lot of board to play and whatnot. And so then I stumbled upon uh, NG Excess, which was uh, started by a gentleman named Austin out of Texas. So, anyway, so, so um, if anyone wants a T-shirt or a water bottle, please ask. <laughs> Let me uh, just jump, jump right into it. So I don't really have any slides. Um, and instead, I just built a very basic application. And this just has uh, several components. You know. Um, and just to show you the what it looks like, I have a, a component for buttons, and all that it is really is uh, two, these two buttons that you see here. Uh, it also has, um, and if you're wondering, uh, the, the two big libraries that I really have here is Bootstrap, and it's really uh, the actual Bootstrap. So I'm using jQuery, forgive me for those who think it's a sin. And um, I, I'm, I also have ng access, so it's really bare. It doesn't really have anything else outside of that. I have another input component, which is just this bottom bar down here. And then I have another component, uh, a modal. So this is uh, one modal. Can you make that bigger? Yes, sir. Of course. I can't see what Oh, got it. Let's see. And so, uh, so essentially, I have three main components. Uh, one component, this button component, really, that has a Aside from having the buttons that you see, I also put uh, one of the models there. And then I broke out another model really on its own component just to kind of showcase the power and ability. Now, frankly, this, uh, this is what it is. When I click on this open model local, all it's really doing is calling um, the basic bootstrap. Where is it? Right here. Where it's just you doing the data toggle. Whatnot. So it, this is calling this down here. Um, with this is fine, but the problem, of course, with this is that uh, if you want to break this out into a separate component or somewhere else, it starts to become difficult. Even if you start to do parent-to-child relationships or whatnot, just so that you can pass data, it starts to become complex. To backtrack a little bit, what NGRX is and what state management is, if uh, some of you aren't aware, it's nothing more that I consider it, frankly, a front-end database. You, you can say a, fr a way where you can, a front-end data store, you know, and that's all it really is. And so instead of having to constantly send calls back to the actual server, you actually go back to the server, get a group of data that you know you're probably going to end up needing, pass it forward, and then you work from there. If you need more, you pass one or two more calls. But you're essentially modifying that front-end store, and you call back to the database whenever you need to. And so. Um, you can, uh, frankly, use uh, these state managements, these, these stores, uh, not only to do uh, actual data storage, you could say, in the front end, but you could also do it to uh, activate components. And in this case, for example, this first button is using Bootstrap, but this bottom button is actually using um, ng-access. And I'm actually, if we look at the code, I'm actually doing this. So up here, I'm calling a, a specific function to open a modal. And all it's doing is dispatching open model. Open. And there's nothing to do here in the action. I'm not really passing anything. But whenever that's executed, all it's really doing is calling this, uh, this uh, remote uh, model to pop up. Now, one of the key differences, too, is that right now I'm actually calling this the model that's actually contained within this component, not within this component. But if I wanted to call this the, the model that's contained here, which is example modal, I can easily just go here and change this to here. And then when this refreshes, I'm calling the same modal here. You know? Now all of this contained within the same component. But so I'm um, so essentially I'm using ng uh, in this case the, the state management to be able to call different components and to essentially play with the website's DOM uh, aside from just passing data. And now if you 
to pass that is as simple as, frankly, doing the same thing. In this case, I'm just using one uh, state management. The way the input is, I built the input is simple. Let's see. Here we go. So the, there's nothing more than uh, I'm using reactive, um, reactive forms, and it's just an input and then a button, and that's it. But when I call the input in the back end, um, I'm just dispatching a new modal data. So once I get the text uh, that's inputted and I submit it, I'm just dispatching here. So when I go in the back end, I'm, it's just frankly a path through here. And it actually gets processed here. Um, so here, this patch state, and this is to me wh why I really enjoy ng-access over NGRX is because of the fact that the first parts, you know, the actions and whatnot, those are the simple ones. You know, uh, they, they're both similar. But where they differ is, frankly, the fact that uh, NGRX uses re reducers. Right, right. And that gets quite complex. And in my tiny little brain, I, I couldn't really comprehend to you know, the furthest extent as uh, just in some of you guys that you know, you, you're expert, you can definitely do this. But me, I'm like, yeah, I have no clue what it's really doing or saying. And I would really have to spend more than I care to to eventually get it to work because I have to uh, split, then join, then do something or other or whatnot. And uh, using a lot of techniques that maybe uh, an advanced person is very used to. But in my case, um, this was much simpler because here all I'm really doing is literally getting the same data that I pushed into the store. And then I can either patch the data or I can set it. And the only difference is that um, in this case, for example, uh, just to show, uh, I have two different, let's say, uh, data, modal and data. If I do set state, what it'll do is that it'll only push to the store whatever I set. But if I do patch, it's like a merge. And just to showcase what I mean by that, uh, this is what I mean by that. Because I put patch state, then they both stay there. But if had I put set state, then modal would have gone away and only data would have stayed. Nonetheless, um, I can enter what I want here. And then when I hit submit, um, I see the data. One thing also uh, what's, what I find really fascinating about um, NGXS is the fact that I didn't put it here, but even when building custom selectors, um, it's actually so much simpler. Let me see if I can actually quickly pull an example of what that might look like. So this is another project that I've been working on. And here, for example, this is what a selector one of my selectors looks like, where I'm actually just going in there um, and I'm pulling from the full state. I just want users. And I, 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 all I'm really doing is getting a specific uh, set of data uh, from that state, which to me, when I look at this, it makes a lot more sense than when I originally had to learn how to make custom selectors through NGRX. And so I think this, this is one of the biggest reasons why I started to go this route, because it seemed a lot more intuitive when building things. and not as complex, frankly. I know I'm saying the same thing, but um, ultimately, when the, one of the last things, of course, to do is to be able to pull the data. Um, and it is as simple, frankly, as just using this select. I called this particular one layout just because that's what I was using. But um, if we look at the what the data looks like here, to be able to, give me a sec to zoom in. To be able to select the data, all you really need to do, for example, if you want to select all of it, is literally call that with the select function. And now I have any and all the data that's nested within here. But if I want to um, just get a particular branch of it, um, I can easily create a custom selector so that I only get that. And then I just call that. And then ultimately, on the front end, it's nothing more than an observable. Um, and I'm just bringing this forward as modal, and then I just want the data portion of that. And so th this is why whenever I pass things here, it's coming in as coming in as the data, if that makes any sense. The whole data. Yes, the whole, the, the whole object is being passed forward in this case. Um, but so, so that's my presentation. Forgive me for not having slides. Oh, that's the plugin. <laughs> yeah. The plugin? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, that's all. That's all really uh, NGS, NGXS, uh, similar to NGRX, where they have their own debug plugin. Um, yeah. No, it is. Yeah. And give me a minute to bring that up.
And it's uh, very similar to, so of course this is the module and GXS, and then this is the Redux tools uh, plugin. And in my case, for example, I, I, all I did was really break out the state into its own uh, yeah, part of the core module. Um, and, and I think this is one of the things that also fascinated me too, is that the fact that um, when I, with with NGRX, I would have to have normally four files, you know, action uh, effects as well. Whereas here, I really ha have all of that stuff contained. So I would put a HTTP call within right right before here, and I would just put it in there. And whenever whatever I get back, I would just go ahead and patch it right to the state or or set the new state or whatnot. Um, as well as have the selectors right above. So now instead of a uh, having one massive store with multiple different files and having a file be um, uh, the center for that, let's say the effects. Here, what I'm actually doing is breaking down the data into its own little stores. And so in this case, I have the layout store with its own small uh, number of selectors, small number of actions, but all self-contained. So if there's an issues with the layout, then I can just go straight to the, that, that data set. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, please. Directed to Jason. Do it up, all right. Okay. So hey, before you stop, ah, I, I had a couple questions because it looks like um, the, the setup on this looks like it's really easy for you to get it set up and get yes, the project sir. going. Yes, sir, it was. All right, and how was it working with the actions or the uh, the decorators to create actions and selectors and was that really is that uh, everything? Of, yeah, everything about NGXS was so much easier uh, to get up and running from the get go, especially. Uh, Knowing nothing, you know. I know, for example, in my case, when I started to dive into NGXS, I already had some level of exposure with NGRX, and all I knew was that this is complicated. And if I really want to get advanced at NGRX, it's going to be even more. Um, and I know that uh, Jesse and others, uh, you know, have been um, working on different libraries to make NGRX a lot simpler to do, so that you don't have to do as much boilerplate and whatnot. Nonetheless, there were still, uh, without having all that pre not like. Without having all that prior knowledge, it was still, um, it wasn't easy to get into, frankly. Nice. So the, those, are, if you don't know, Austin McDaniels was here this past um, August. He's a good friend of mine. And, and he's the one that wrote this library. So this is a really great alternative um, if you want to do um, NGRX, but you need it to be smaller, but you don't want to use something like MobX or, or whatnot. Um, it, it uses patterns that you're already familiar with where you're applying decorators. Um, to uh, you know uh, functions and, and it, it's really easy to work with so this might be a really good alternative for you for a really small app to be able to build something very very quickly um, or like in, in your case where you didn't have the NGRX experience that this is a really a really quick way for him to get up to speed so yeah. and the beauty of this too if anything is that because of a lot of this at some point it should be much easier to segue uh, from here into NGRX especially as I need to get more complex. Um, but I know from the get-go. Uh, so yeah, if, if you, questions? Yeah, can you just cover the components once again? You don't have, you don't have reducers, you don't have selectors? Yes, no, so uh, you do have selectors. It's just that they're one contained within the state file, actually. So instead of having, uh, instead of having a custom selector that you might have somewhere else, if, because you might have a lot more lines of code, uh, it is literally as simple as, this now I, this is interestingly a lot bigger of one of let me see if i can find an easier selector all right sorry so what does that look like um i was going to show a an example of what a selector so in this case for example all i'm really doing is pulling um out of the state i'm just pulling shifts and then i'm just turning it into really a, a, an array more than anything else and so it is as simple as just these four lines of code whereas I know previously when I was diving into NGRX, uh, I had to go to a separate file and do a bunch of things that I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. I did, and eventually worked, but, but yes, sir. So how do you think this scales for, you know, you were saying a small project, uh, Jesse, does this scale or no to like enterprise? The, um, yes, I, I've seen this scaled in, in large applications as well, where if you start to get into more complicated actions and reducers, uh, and, and effects, then it, it may not be your best choice. Um, again, it's, it's, it's all about design, uh, design decisions and how you're kind of building it. Um, and it also comes down to preference. What do you enjoy working with? Is this, does this actually resonate more for you? Then great, use this. Um, in, in the back end of what it's actually storing in the client-side store is almost identical. 
It's just a different approach. And Austin, yeah. uh, what he talks about when you look at this is that, you know, when we're building components, we're using decorators. We're using at component to create a decorator um, on our, our class here. And then it, it has the, the, the component features to it, right? Well, same thing with what he's doing um, with actions and selectors and whatnot. Now on this, um, you know, on, on, on model data here, I, I'm able to apply action to it. And now it, it has that. It, it's now available to me. I can call it as an action. Again, it comes down to preference and style and, and what works well for you. Um, I tend to come from a school um, having come up through Visual Basic where any, everything was implicit and I didn't really understand what was going on. And that, that would actually harm me in a, in a project. So I, I tend to be more explicit. And I want to see what the actions are and the reducers and how things are working. Because it's great that it'll it'll save me some time up front, but when it gets more complex and I have to get outside of that box, it might be really difficult for me to be able to do that. It might not be quite as easy. Again, though, this is up to you. This is a preference and a choice that you would be making. So and to his point, ultimately what fits better because you know there are several frameworks that seem to be doing the same thing, using the same Redux tool. So on the front end of it all. It all looks the same, but yet when you start to dive into it, um, what works best for you for what you're doing, and then how complex do you really need to be? And if you do, then um, I would always follow what Jesse says. I'm sure there's a good one. 